Hi, Vivian. Hello. You? <laughs> Hello. It's so nice to meet you. Nice uh, to meet. And say hi to the audience. Hi, audience. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, now, we're very interesting to hear what you have to say, and I know some in the audience especially are interested in how the customers are receiving the gold run um, ventures that you're doing. So, um, have a nice time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vivian, and I'm the founder and CEO of Gold Run. We're based in New York City. and. Um, you know, just a little background before I start showing you things. Um, I, I trained as an architect. And, you know, you might wonder what an architect has to do with augmented reality. And I think, for me, it was always a real obsession and passion about how our digital lives and physical lives collide. How we create experiences. Um, our, you know, our daily life is, is the experience that we know and ever... Uh, increasingly, we're interacting with technology in, in ways that um, truly sort of defines us and affects us and changes us. And so, for me, when I started to think about augmented reality, you know, on one hand, there's a love of science fiction and a love of the future. And it's, it's easy to get seduced um, by the future. But I think what's even more exciting is to think about how technology can actually affect us in really profound ways today. And when we think about smartphones, we're all carrying around incredibly powerful technology in our, park, in our pocket. And when the smartphone you know, is using GPS, has the ability to know where you are, then essentially your city becomes a chessboard and you become the chess piece. And that's incredibly powerful. And so that was really the, um, the basis for, for Gold Run is thinking about how we interact with each other and with virtual objects in a completely new way. So I'm going to now switch over to the screen so you can start to see some imagery and I'm just going to be talking over the, the images. So let's see if this works. All right, so can you see that hopefully? Um, so, you know, as I described, so Gold Run is uh, combining augmented reality, which I think you're now familiar with, with virtual goods and real world rewards. So that's one of the critical things with Gold Run is we're tying it to things that actually matter to you in your daily life. So the first project I'm going to show is a campaign that we did with Airwalk. Airwalk's like a popular sneaker brand in here. I don't know if it's popular there, but um, we were thinking about how we bridge the gap between the digital world and the physical world. So the photo that you're seeing on the screen, that, that's not Photoshop, that's actually just taken through our application. So the platform we've created allows you to not only see augmented reality objects, but actually take photographs of them. So suddenly a virtual object has real world scale and it's quite large. You know, it looks like it might be 20 feet big. So now um, if, you, if you could play the video for Airwalk, that would be great. This is an Airwalk store. And so is this. They're the world's first invisible pop-up stores. Stores that can be set up anywhere at any time. Simply by using smartphones, geolocation, and augmented reality. We created them for the limited edition relaunch of the Airwalk Gym. A sneaker originally made for kids who hang out in skate parks or on the beach instead of going to gym class. So that's where we set up the stores. Because the marketing budget was small, we relied on bloggers to get the word out. And on November 6, 2010, the stores went live for one day. To get the gym, people had to be in the right location, so they downloaded the Gold Run app, found the store, found the shoe, and bought it. It got a lot of buzz. Airwalk got $5 million worth of earned media, and their e-store had its busiest weekend ever. 
Tell me what augmented reality shopping is and why that's going to be a big deal this year. Augmented reality is pretty rad. For example, in New York City, we've got an invisible store where if you're in the right location and you put your phone up, you can see a whole Airwalk store. An exclusive product sold to an exclusive audience for an entirely new retail experience. Very cool style and, and I'm glad they're back and uh, I'm gonna get a pair today. The Invisible Pop-Up Store. Watch out for the next one invisibly appearing near you. So, um, so what you saw is, is really understanding the concept of geofencing. So we actually turned two physical locations into large stores. So instead of bringing people to a brick and mortar store, suddenly they could stay where they are, where they already hang out, and we could offer limited edition product that was sold exclusively through our app uh, in the real world. So the next example I'm going to show you, um, that, that first example with Airwalk is about what we're calling virtual commerce, so v-commerce. So on the web, you have e-commerce. We're sort of pioneering what we call v-commerce. So it's thinking about, again, how does the experience of the web translate into the offline world? This, this next ex example we did with Barnes & Noble and Brooklyn Decker. She's a, a, a model and an actress. And we thought about here, it wasn't selling product, but it was the way to be interact with, with a celebrity in a new way. So if you could play the video, uh, you'll get an understanding of what we did, which is uh, we turned her into an augmented reality object, and we actually placed her at 700 Barnes & Nobles across the country. So you could play the video. Download the free Gold Run app from iTunes and follow the fine Brooklyn Decker run. Head to the magazine section of the nearest Barnes & Noble bookstore. Post your pics to Facebook and tweet at Will. And for more Brooklyn Decker, pick up the February issue of Esquire at your local Barnes & Noble now. Available in digital form for Nook Color. All right, so in, um, in that example, you saw how we actually brought a retail store to life um, and had a new way to interact with people virtually. So in this next image that I have up, it's the idea of connecting mobile to out of home. Out of home is just a term for, you know, print, print advertising and digital advertising outdoors. So this is a project we did. I'm not going to show the video, but there was a large billboard in New York City. And then we created uh, these augmented uh, characters that you could sort of tell you um, how, how the board was feeling, how you were feeling if you had a good day, had a bad day. So suddenly these points of interaction just become uh, really fun. So we like to think of it as, um, you know, a sort of a visual form of communication. So in, the, in the, this next slide, we're going back to the virtual commerce. Um, and, you know, my background, I've spent a lot of years working with brands and ad agencies. And I think that there's a real need for brands to be able to exist in the mobile space because... Um, that's basically what people carry around with them all the time is their, is their cameras. So here we're seeing two images of one, you know, your product could be out in a park. This is Millennial Park in Chicago. Or um, on the right, you know, you could be watching a TV program and scroll through different products. So suddenly the, the idea of a shopping experience becomes much personal than on a website. Um, there's also the concept of interactive TV. So... People are talking about, you know, checking into a TV show. But again, that's um, it's not visually driven. And I really think that the language of the future is a visually driven language. And so what we're doing, we're talking to a, a number of TV programs here about taking characters from the show and actually 
bringing them to life, whether it's in your living room or outside on the street. And this is a shows interactive interiors. This is what we are doing with Barnes and Noble, but this can go a lot further into games for kids. Um, so they can literally see animations of characters from books or from DVDs come to life in the store. And we have the ability um, with our platform to, you know, GPS just a single store or hundreds of stores. We could make the entire country a hot zone or everyone's bedroom. So there's this ability. It allows brands and ad agencies to enter into the mobile space very quickly and very cost efficiently. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just a platform the way Twitter is a platform for communication, you know, or Facebook, but this is all done through visuals. Um, this is some, something we're doing is, is interactive uh, fashion looks. So you can see different, different collections, see how the model is wearing it. You can actually capture the look. Um, when you capture the different look, you, you know, you can get different discounts and coupons. This is all part of uh, version two. We've been in beta and we're launching the full version in um, two weeks in September. And right now it's only in the U.S., but we're going to hopefully be um, branching outside of the U.S. once we get some clients. So um, if you're interested in bringing it to <laughs> outside the U.S., let us know. But so really it's, it's a way to, to, to interact with people in a new fashion. So I want to show you some things that also are not for brands. So in, in thinking about the campaign, the presidential campaign, which is you know, becoming a very uh, hot topic in, in the U.S. and also looking at the different Republican candidates. So we can create an animated graphic and uh, actually then you can have your friends take photos with whichever candidate you support. And every photo you take can be posted to Facebook or Twitter. So there's, you know, Foursquare. So there's a instant um, ability to map your images onto your social graph so your friends can see what you're doing. This is another example of, uh, this is for, um, you know, dog and cat adoption across the U.S. And um, again, the idea of going to a website is, is pretty impersonal, but if you can all of a sudden see that there's a shelter for animals in your town and you maybe didn't even know it, and suddenly you can um, interact, you know, with this animated puppy on your way home and it tells you, hey, you know, one mile from your house there's a shelter you know, you come adopt me. So there's just new ways of, of starting to interact with the world around us. And this is a, a big uh, game that we're going to be launching in September in the U.S. And it's, it's the first uh, virtual, like, vinyl toy scavenger hunt. So across, across different cities, there's going to be virtual vinyl toys. And each toys have, have different point systems. So in our new app, there's a, a point system and a leaderboard. And, and so it, it supports ARGs, alternate reality games, and scavenger hunts. So this is going to be a, a month-long game, and you're going to collect the virtual characters. And the top uh, winners are actually going to win the physical toys. So it sort of starts, you know, you're playing in the real world, but you're collecting digital characters. But then in the end, you win physical characters. Um, so this is just the, the user flow where you see the map view and um, you can go take photographs of the different toys, get collect your points, um, at, you know, and then also start to win them. So hopefully I've given uh, you a sense of how augmented reality can be applied um, to brands and for marketing. And, um, you know, we're, we're excited to hear from people and we're also hiring and looking for interns, so please find me on Twitter or email me, and I'd love to be in touch. And uh, I think that's, that's about it, so thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Vivian. It was so nice to talk to you. Um, Okay, just to summarize, now we talked about what is good augmented reality, and I, hopefully you got like a 360 view of what to do with it, both speaking of mm, marketing and utility and also entertainment. And we heard some in-depth examples from both Vivian and Alex, and I'm so happy, happy for that. Please give them a very warm applause.
Yeah, I also wanted to just, uh, since um, Megan Miller was discussing in the other room about being hyper-connected and also fully disconnected, and you missed out, I wanted you to uh, maybe perhaps think of buying the book. And I want to give you also a reading tip of my own. And many of you already know it. Uh, it's called uh, Sweets and the Internet, and it's a report, it's annual, and it's for free. You can find it on the web address below. And uh, there are probably going to be a new version in November, I hope for. In it, you can read about um, Sweden being one of the top most connected countries, internet connected countries in the world. Anyway, we've got 3.2 million Swedes not using internet very much at all. So reading this report and get all the facts and figure, figures about uh, how people use internet and when they use internet and when they don't use it. I think that's really interesting to know when you're going to do, do uh, augmented reality um, products. Thank you very much. <laughs>